All right, welcome back to shooting the monster. So, so far we've prepared the start of the game. We've programmed the monster to do its wobbly, monstery thing. And uh, we have made the player rotate around the monster. That is great. Now, I want to start focusing on actually creating bullets that will go to the monster. All right, and hit it. So, I'm going to focus my effort right now on the bullet sprite. So, I'm going to click on it now. Now, we will control the firing of these bullets with a little variable that I'm going to call can fire. So I'm going to make our first variable in the game, make variable, and I'm going to name this can fire and then hit OK. Now, at the very start of the game, I'm going to set this variable to no. Now, you can set a variable to any value you like. I'm going to set it to a text value saying no. And this specifies that the player will not be able to fire any bullets. All right. Now, this variable will be set to yes when we receive the start game message. So until we receive that message, the can fire variable will be set to no. And I'm going to go to events and I'm going to bring this when I receive start game. So at the start of the game, the player is free to fire any bullets that you want. So I'm going to set this variable to yes. So I'm going to set can fire to yes. All right. Now in the main loop in the main logic for the bullet sprite, I'm going to add a forever loop. And I'm always going to check if the can fire variable is set to yes. And if the key space bar is pressed, so that we trigger the creation of a bullet via a clone. So I'm going to bring in an if block and I'm going to bring in this and operator from the operator section. And in the first diamond shaped hole, I'm going to test if the can fire variable is set to yes. So I'm going to bring in can fire in the first space and I'm going to test that can fire is set to yes. And in the second diamond shaped hole, I'm going to bring in the key space pressed. So if this condition is met, if the player is allowed to fire bullets and the player also presses the key space bar, I'm going to create a clone of myself. So I'm going to go to control and I'm going to create clone of myself and I'm going to add a small uh, time in between the bullets. So I'm going to wait for a small amount of time, like 0.1 seconds. Now, obviously, we need to program these clones as well. So let me add a script starting with when I start as a clone. So when I start as a clone, because the original sprite is hidden, the first thing that I'm going to do is to make this clone visible on the stage. And I'm also going to switch the costume to bullet. So that little green dot. So let me hit the flag now. And um, let me hit the play button and let's hit the space bar a couple of times. So notice that we've created a number of clones for the bullet spread. This is pretty nice, but we need to do something with these bullets. We need to make them start at the tip of the spaceship and make them travel towards the monster and touch it. So how do we do that? We have quite a bit of a problem. That's because the bullet has to know where the spaceship is. But the player sprite and the monster sprite are both positioned in the center of the stage. So if you remember, we programmed the player sprite to go to x equals 0 and y equals 0. And the monster sprite the same way, go to x equals 0 and y equals 0. So how do we make the bullet aware of where the spaceship is on the stage? So while we don't know the position on the spaceship on the stage, we do know how it's orientated, what its rotation is. So we can create a small variable that always keeps track of where the spaceship is orientated with respect to the monster. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to click on the player sprite and I'm going to create a variable. So make a variable and I'm going to call this player direction. And I'm going to set this player direction variable to and the value inside is going to be I'm going to go to motion and I'm going to bring this rounded direction block from the player's 
sprite. So the player direction is always going to be the direction of the player sprite. I'm going to distance out these scripts a little bit so you can see them more clearly. So I'm always setting player direction to direction both when the flag is clicked and I'm also going to duplicate it and put it after the if conditions in the forever loop of the script starting with when I receive start game. So if I hit the flag and if I hit the play button, notice how the player direction changes as I rotate the player sprite. So we can use this variable to calculate where the bullet is going to start moving towards the monster. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to the bullet sprite and after switching the costume to bullet, I'm going to run the following steps. I am going to start the bullet at x equals zero and y equals zero. Then, starting in the center of the stage, I'm going to point it wherever the player is pointing. So using this player direction variable. So I'm going to point in direction, player direction. Then, after pointing the bullet in that direction, I'm going to move a number of steps in that direction. So I'm going to go to motion again, and I'm going to move a number of steps, and I'm going to move 130 steps. So right around where the ship is going to get positioned. Then I will make it point towards the monster. So after moving 130 steps, then that means the bullet will always start where the ship is going to get positioned on the stage. So if I hit the flag now, Notice what's happening. If I hit the play button, if I hit the spacebar once, notice that we have a bullet starting at the tip of the spaceship. Now, all we need to do is to make these bullets point towards the monster and increasingly approach the monster. So I'm going to get this blue block point towards monster, all right? And then I'm going to add a forever loop. So I'm going to bring in forever and I'm going to add move 10 steps. Now, if it touches the monster, then I'm going to delete the clone because the bullet has hit the monster. So I'm going to go to control, bring in an if block and from the sensing section, if touching the monster, all right, I'm going to delete this clone. So from control, I'm going to delete this clone. But before deleting the clone, I'm going to broadcast a message. I'm going to tell the monster that it's being hit. So I'm going to go to events and broadcast a new message. And I'm going to name this message monster hit. So if I hit the flag and click play, let me shoot a few bullets. See? Now the bullets start from the tip of the spaceship and they all approach the monster. No matter where I am on screen, the bullets always start in the correct position and they are pointing towards the monster. So now let's actually program the monster to be hit. So I'm going to click on the monster sprite and I'm going to add a variable here that will say if the monster is active. So I'm going to create a new variable saying monster active. At the start of the application, I'm going to set the monster active to yes. So I'm going to add an orange block saying set monster active to yes. And when the monster is hit, so that means when the monster receives that monster hit message, so when I receive monster hit, I'm going to set this variable to no. So I'm going to get to variables again and set monster active to no. Now, because the monster is not active, then I will make it switch costume to this red one, which means I've hit the monster. All right, so I'm going to go to looks and switch the costume to evil eye hit and make it wait in the hit state 
for half a second. So I'm going to go to control and wait for 0.5 seconds. And then I'm going to switch monster active back to yes. So I'm going to go to variables and set monster active to yes. Now at this point monster active doesn't actually influence anything. It's just a variable getting different values. Well I'm going to get monster to not switch its costumes when it's inactive. So this costume switching thing will only happen if the monster active is equal to yes. So I'm going to go to control and I'm going to bring an if block and I'm going to wrap all of these blocks. So the costume switching will only happen if the monster active variable is yes. So I'm going to go to operators, bring in this equal sign and from variables, bring in monster active in the first space and monster active must equal yes. So for the half of a second when the monster active variable is set to no, the monster will stop cycling its costumes. And when the monster active is back to yes, the monster is free to cycle its costumes again. All right, so let's test that. I'm hitting the flag, hitting the play button, and after I hit it, I will be able to shoot notice. I'm shooting some bullets and the monster is blocked in that harmed state with that red costume. You see? So we can actually hit the monster now. All right, let me uncheck these variables so that our screen is clear. So we've done a great job so far. We can actually hit the monster. It's time to implement multiple levels. So when we harm the monster enough and deplete its life, the monster will respawn and start a new level, an increasingly more difficult level. But that is the subject of the next video.